Hi guys, Sam from Warpgate Studios again here and I've been asked to do a little video on airbrush and keeping your airbrushes clean. Um, so without further ado, I'll show you how I clean my airbrush. This is an Oata Neo, uh, super cheap workhorse, really good for priming, use it a hell of a lot. Not really for detail stuff, but the majority of uh, priming, um, zinteal stuff, all that good stuff. And it's a cracking little thing. Uh, you can get these from Hobby Lobby for about 100 bucks. Um, and all the bits there, replacement bits are in Hobby Lobby. So it's super convenient. Um, and I'll show you how I clean it because it does get dirty. Um, and I'll show you how I get it, keep it clean. Um, this back part, I'm sure you've seen a lot of other artists. You don't even need this. This is just for looks, really. Um, and it, it can, becomes a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, first thing I do when I'm cleaning my airbrush is um, I pull off the back there like that. And then I just pull the needle all the way through. You can kind of see, yeah, it's got a little bit of build up of something there. And I need to give that a clean. Um, so that's on the needle side of things. And then I'm going to unscrew the back here and pull this out all the way awesome and i'm going to put that there one thing that i do and have learned is that when i am cleaning my airbrush i like to organize everything so that i know where everything is uh, because there can be some little bits this is the top button that goes down and up and back and i'm going to take that out that needs a bit of a clean in there as well the paint does get everywhere um some airbrushes have a fixed um a paint uh pot up here this one has ones that i can actually swap out and um, so i'm actually going to take this off and again give this a little bit of a clean you can see paint gets in there um and so that's the majority of the back part of it and now the the thing that gets most dirty and needs a, a lot of cleaning is this front nozzle piece um, so i'm going to take off this some bits have this uh, some airbrushes do some don't um, and then i'm also going to take off this front compartment and this can be a little bit of a pain um, but i've made sure this is nice and easy to get off um, so again take that off um, now this is the nozzle and you'll see there's a little bit of dirt or something on there already this is going to need a good clean out um, these normally some again some uh, airbrushes have these some don't I'm just going to take the little key uh, that comes with this and just give this a little uh, twizzle to undo this um, and then this is going to pop out this is the thing that you're going to um, lose a hell of a lot more than anything else you can see how tiny that is and that needs a clean as well so in essence, this is um, my airbrush bare bones. I could take this off, this bottom piece. Don't really need to. Um, very, very occasionally I need to do that. I can now throw this into a sonic cleaner if I want, um, but I don't need to. Uh, you know, I sonic clean probably about once a month uh, for a nice deep clean, keeping it nice and wet. Um, but I'll show you how to, to clean this now. One thing you are going to need, um, which is what, what one thing I've prepared and I've got, is a lot of these um, earbud cleaners. Um, and they're really, really good for this. Um, I'm also going to go and go through the cleaning agents that I use with this as well. This is a fantastic product that I got um, locally. I can't, don't think it was Hobby Lobby. I think it was another... Um, hobby company over here uh, Medea airbrush cleaner really really good it the thing that I like about it is odorless so it doesn't stink your room out um, and if you've got kids or anything or pets and stuff like that this is really really good it's odorless and really really safe um, and then I also use a little bit of Vallejo airbrush thinner believe it or not um, this is kind of like my finishing thing to lube everything up because this goes through my brush all the time anyway so this just kind of is a, a finishing product but um, yeah so I have uh, the uh, this Madea airbrush cleaner I'm just going to give myself I'm going to get a little pot over here and pour some in I run this through my airbrush as well um, just because it's a, a fantastic product and I'm going to dip in here and get to work so i'm just going to run this around and you'll see how many of these I, I actually go through these cotton buds because they 
you you do get a lot of grime dirt and you'll see here the amount of uh of crap that comes out of it and you can just keep going you can have this thing looking absolutely fantastic um and it just builds up again it's just if if it's something that you use a lot like i do then you'll you'll notice that there's a lot of crap that comes out of here when you're cleaning them um I'll also go through some of the other stuff that I've got on the table, um, but once I've got this looking a little bit better and getting this off, you'll see that the Medea airbrush cleaner actually makes the paint kind of cling to itself and it's, it's a lot easier to get out once you start working with it. Um, but we'll, we'll keep going and make sure this top part is good to go. And yeah, it kind of makes it a, lot, a little bit stringy, the paint and anything that's dried in there, and a little bit easier to come out with um, and make it all nice and shiny in there. Um, so another thing that I, I've got, this is like two or three bucks from Amazon. This is an airbrush needle cleaner. Um, this is really, really good. It's super sharp. So it kind of, that's why it's got like this top on it. This is really, really good for, for cleaning the nozzle the little nozzle piece up the top there that I'm pointing at. Um, but it's also got a nice little tip just to get in and get some of this, some of the loose paint out of here um, so that you've got a completely clear channel in there to, to work with. So that's the first thing um, that I always do is, is make sure this part here where the paint goes in, we're gonna have a quick look inside of there. It looks pretty clean, but I'm gonna give it a quick wash out um, with a new, new brush I do like to keep my airbrushes quite clean so I'm going to stick this in there and give that a good wash out and you'll see there's still paint that comes out of here I've just been working on some word bearers care space really so there's a bit of red in there um still left but uh but yeah all good um so we're going to give that and then nothing's coming out so we're, I'm kind of happy with that and um, we'll give that an okay to proceed um next thing I purchased is a set of pipe cleaners from um ebay i think it was ebay or, or amazon um, and they come in like a, a miniature sort of uh, set of different thicknesses the ones you're going to be using for for our airbrushes are the two slash three thinnest ones of the lot um they're really really good you can see that the two smallest ones is the ones i've been using um they fit down the, the channel quite nicely um and they give it a good old clean out so i'm just going to dip this into some of the cleaner um, and then I'm going to ram this all the way up my, and you'll see it goes all the way through, through here, through this part and into this channel here. Um, and as soon as you kind of see it popping out the top, you've got, got there and you can kind of see the amount of crap and dirt and grime that comes out from just that channel at the back. It's pretty crazy. Um, so we make sure we get all that off and you'll start seeing in your pot and you may need to change it out a lot of the the um, Paint residue that's coming out of your airbrush. It's kind of crazy It can look super super clean your airbrush But then when you actually start giving it a good clean out it uh, it can look an absolute state again So I'm going to give this a good Back and forth in there just to make sure we get everything out and then we're going to rinse this out again in the uh, in the pot, and again you'll start you'll see the amount coming out of there. Um, I'm happy with that. And what I'm actually going to do now, um, just to keep it keep it uh, nice and lubed up in it, I'm just going to drop some airbrush thinner in there to run through, um, and then I can pull out uh, a lot of the stuff. So you'll see that I've dislodged a lot of crap in the in the actual barrel there um, and then I'm going to run uh, uh, and as I, as I just did there run some thinner just in the top here squeeze a couple and then you'll see it pop out but I'm actually going to draw some of it out here and you'll see that it's actually slightly colored because it's picking up some of that red um, that I've used and that is a method of me there you go pink tip um, method of, of getting that that tube done um, I'm gonna now put this to the side because I'm happy with how the clean this is the channel here is in here and up the back here don't really need to go crazy with the, the, the top back here uh, another product that I actually have that's pretty good that I'm gonna grab 
is some oil. I have some um, airbrush oil that I use that's pretty decent. I'm going to try and find it now. I may have moved it somewhere. I'm not sure where I put it, but I will find it in a minute to show you. Um, it's some very, very light, gentle oil uh, that you can use when you are lubing the airbrush back up again. It's not really needed. Um, someone mentioned it to me and I've tried it and it's okay, um, but I still prefer the, um, yeah, I am gonna have to try and find that later, but um, so that's that's the kind of uh, way that I would, would do it. Um, plenty of airbrush thinner in there to lube everything up. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is look at the nozzle and clean this thing. Um, this is super, super interesting. So this, you can give this a quick dip in here. This water is dirty now. Sorry, let me get that in focus. This water's dirty, so I'm actually just gonna pour this out onto some paper, get rid of that. And you can see that that's all built up in a clean um, uh, airbrush. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more air cleaner. Um, just so that you're not using dirty water. Um, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a dip in here and I'm going to grab the nozzle and I'm going to put this up here and all you want to do is twist it around like this and this is supposed to clean out and you'll see, let me if I can get it in focus, a little bit of paint that came out of that nozzle. Um, and that's really what you're doing. You're you're taking um, the, any little bits that are building up in that nozzle part and out, you're just taking it out. There's much, there shouldn't be that much in there, but if you haven't ever done this, that's where it may well be blocking up um, and you'll find small particles in there. One thing I do do, once I've cleaned these two together, I actually put this back together again so I don't lose the nozzle. The nozzle, I've lost two nozzles and they're about 10, 20 bucks a piece, I think, maybe 30. So they're not cheap. Um, but once I actually get this there, I grab my uh, uh, little wrench and I put it on there. Don't tighten it too much because you'll actually break it. Um, but you just tighten it up enough so it's on there and you're good to go. Um, next thing I'm going to do is grab one of the older um, bits here, and I'm just gonna run this down the whole of the needle and just to give this a clean, you'll see how much that needle didn't look like it had that much on there, um, but it certainly did have a lot of red on there. So I'm just gonna give this a nice polish, clean, all the way down here and all the way up to the tip. Um, and you wanna make sure that this is gleaming because if there is anything on this, it will block up, it'll, it'll not be a, a fun time. And then I'm gonna grab a clean one and just give this a dry and make sure there's nothing left on there. You know, and you'll see there is still stuff on there. Um, so it it's one of those things that if you do look after your airbrushes, I've had this airbrush for about five years, six years now, and I've cleaned it, maintained it, and it has been brilliant. I've had to replace the needle once and the nozzle twice because I've lost the nozzles, um, but um, it does me fantastically good. Um, okay, that's the next part. Um, and then I'm gonna start putting this back together again. You can give these pieces a bit of a wipe over um, just to make sure everything's super clean. Um, there are gonna be built up bits of, I'm not sure exactly what this is on here. It's like a black residue. I think it might be in a label or something at one time. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna stop putting this back. So the first thing to put back is um, folding this back in here. It actually, it's got a weird way of doing it. This moves around everywhere. If you wanna face it forward and then kind of bend it in here this way and then push it along and then click it back up again. Okay, and we're just gonna leave this to rest. Um, we're also gonna put the spring on in a second. Uh, we've actually got the first, the, the next piece is you actually put the um, trigger in here as well. We're gonna make sure that's in the right place. Then we're gonna be putting the spring back on and then we're gonna be screwing this back on. And then we wanna screw this in um, and make sure that this is ready to go. Um, and then we're gonna get this 
tighten back on. Make sure that the trigger works. Yep, everything's good. Goes up and down, back and forward. Yep, the dual action's working great. And then I'm gonna be putting, popping my needle all the way back through, nice and gently. You don't wanna bend that needle at all. Nice and gently all the way through until you get to the end and you see it pop out at the top there. Make sure there's nothing coming out with that needle. Um, and what I want, to, what I do is I have a couple of checks that I make on the needle as well. I'm just gonna tighten this up a little bit more and get this on here. Wonderful. Okay, so the checks that I do, um, I've now got this tightened up. So this should be pulling this back and I wanna make sure it's not too tight and not too loose. Um, you see, this is not uh, good enough for me because the, the needle is not pushing back in again. So I'm gonna actually push this in a little bit more. Give this a nice tighten up and just doubly make sure that that needle that's this air there is coming out no it's still not so i've got an issue with the lube inside of things so what i'm going to do is just get a little bit more airbrush thinner and keep this wet and just put a little bit of airbrush thinner in there and see exactly what's going on Awesome. Okay, so we see that that's now down there. We're gonna tighten this and put this back on again. And there we go. We've got the action going. It's maybe a little bit too loose, but I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit. And make sure that this is good. Oh, and now you'll see some of that water that I put in there is coming out. And I just wanna make sure that there's no crap in there and keep this gleaming. See, there's a little bit of black that came out with that one. So I'm just going to do this and yeah, you'll see there's still a little bit of paint coming through. So this is the first check that I do to make sure the needle is going back and is working fine. Yeah, great. Um, and then I'm going to put the top back on. I'm going to make sure quickly as well that this hole in the, in the cap, the front cap is decent. There's no build up in there. I can run a quick little wash in there, then give it a dry out, make sure there's no build up of paint. Yep, we're good. And then put this back on. And then I'm gonna put the nozzle back on. Yep, fantastic. Now I'm gonna put the cap back on again. This shouldn't be too dirty. If it is, give this a little wipe as well. Um, give this a good clean out and this should go back on nicely. I'm, I'm using some of the dirty cotton swabs just to give this a clean. You just wanna, this, you know, uh, the outside of it, you can make this gleaming if you want, if you're really, really pedantic on keeping it super clean. But the major things is just this connection down at the bottom here. Um, and then once that's done, you can screw this back in. I'm just gonna get rid of some of this crap off of here. Screw this back on. And then the proof is in the pudding when the compressor's on. I'm gonna put this back on the compressor now and screw this back on. Awesome. And then we're gonna turn the compressor on. And then we're gonna just shoot a little bit of water through this, or in my case, a little bit of the thinner, just to make sure this is running and coming out. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of tissue paper. Give it a little bit back and forth. Then you'll see there's a bit of, bit of crap coming out there, but not too bad. And then there's some more stuff that's coming out of there as well, which is great. So that's my last piece. And then you can see that this is a fully ready to go airbrush. And I'm going to turn off the compressor. Um, this is fully ready to go um, for your next painting mission. So hope that's helped. Um, I'll try and find all of the products 
um, on Amazon I've, uh, that I use. Um, the thinner, uh, I think I've mentioned it in some of the uh, other videos, but Vallejo airbrush thinner is awesome. Um, and the Medea airbrush cleaner as well, really, really good. The um, pipe cleaners, reusable pipe cleaners, fantastic little products, love them, save me so much time. Um, and plenty of co cotton swabs that you can get from Walmart or uh, your local supermarket. So, yeah, all those products are great. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for the commenting. Appreciate it all. And if you've got any more suggestions on videos, please feel free to shoot me a message. Um, and if you like this and want me to do some more videos like this, please subscribe and like the channel. And I will see you all soon. Cheers.